Hello everyone, I'm Tatsuya Sato from Hirachi. Today I'd like to talk about toward fully decentralized system with hyperledger fabric requirement analysis of uh, decentralized uh, system configuration and operation and potential use of a decentralized system operation tool of CSC. Here is an introduction uh, to this presentation. Uh, this presentation targets a system using hyperledger fabric. Hereafter, we call hyperledger fabric just a fabric. And also, we call uh, a, a system using fabric, uh, fabric based system. Okay. Fabric based system provides the value of executing uh, across multiple organizations in a decentralized manner. To uh, maximize the value, uh, it is essential to decentralization not only in the execution system but also the entire system, including system configuration and management. However, there are gaps between them, and uh, it may be a disincentive for production use. So, in this presentation, to add fully decentralized fabric based system, First, we try to analyze comprehensive basic requirement for realizing uh, fully decentralized uh, fabric-based systems and design a reference architecture to satisfy the uh, requirement. And then, we will demonstrate the applicability of OPSSG, uh, which is a decentralized uh, system operation tool to add achieving some of the requirement on management perspective. Okay, uh, first, uh, let's briefly uh, review uh, fabric based systems. This slide explains the execution system of fabric based system. And here is an overview of a fabric based system. So, uh, each organization form a trust domain in fabric. In other words, organization uh, is unit with participant independent. Also, uh, from uh, version 1, fabric introduces execute order variate architecture, uh, which enables transaction across multiple organizations with uh, increasing uh, scalability. In this architecture, fabric separate uh, the trust model into two parts. Uh, first one is ordering service and second one is uh, transaction validation. So trust model for ordering depends on communication protocol and trust model for transaction validation depends on endorsement policy. Next, let's uh, explain about uh, management side of fabric-based system. Uh, fabric manages chain code, which are uh, fabric's smart contract, and ledger for each channel, uh, which is fabric's sub-network. Uh, this uh, figure shows an example of uh, a fabric-based system with a small uh, management uh, part. And as shown in the figure, in fabric can update the configuration by the combination of fabric uh, CRI subcommand executed by each organization. And it needs to coordinate across multiple organizations with uh, config parameters like chain code definition. Internally, fabric issues uh, special transactions and store the configuration on chain. Uh, so, typical uh, steps to update uh, the config uh, here. Okay, then let's discuss about trust model design in fabric based systems. So, the level of decentralization required for fabric based systems depends on assumed trust model and configuration. In the past, the main focus on uh, have been on ensuring decentralization 
uh, in execution system, mainly this part. Uh, but in Sika trust model, decentralization in the management system become also important, uh, this part. Now, uh, let's consider about some trust model uh, as example. Uh, first, uh, first case of consortium uh, is here. In this consortium, transaction participants are not uh, trust, uh, trustable each other. This is very basic. And the consortium has a uh, single consortium owner, which has the consortium. In this case, uh, if the owner does not participate in the transactions, uh, as a participant can trust the owner uh, because uh, owner has no interest on uh, transaction. In this case, uh, centralized management by owner like this would not be problem. Again, because uh, owner has no interest on transaction. The second, second case, on the other hand, the, uh, the consortium owner uh, also participate in the transaction. In this case, other participant uh, does, uh, don't fully trust the owner. In this case, uh, for management side, if uh, centralized management by uh, owner uh, is executed, the owner can control the blockchain network to its advantage. So, uh, such centralized management would not be acceptable in this case. So, in stick-up uh, trust model, one of the challenges is that uh, can it be completely decentralized, including management. Okay, next topic is related work. We could find some activities that focus on certain aspects of a based uh, blockchain-based system uh, and uh, mention enduring decentralization, like this. However, there are no work systematically organized requirements to achieve decentralized or permissioned blockchain or fabric. So, our motivation is to know comprehensive requirement for realizing fully decentralized public-based system. In this part, we try to consider uh, basic requirement and the reference architecture of fully decentralized public-based systems. We extracted the four uh, basic requirement for decentralized public-based systems based on both related work and our experiences findings. We categorized statement and important description in related work and consolidated them as a basic requirement. The perspectives of uh, the basic requirement are following. Uh, I will explain the uh, perspective uh, one by one in a subsequent slide. Okay, just a moment. The perspective, the first perspective is ID, identity. That is, uh, ideas to identify participant and node in the blockchain network and method of managing them. A requ requirement for the perspective is that unit of stakeholder, business, individual, should have an uh, independent root of trust. And the uh, left part uh, shows typical case of intercompanies. So, in fabric, a CA acts a uh, root of trust. This is one important point. And uh, if there is a conflict of interest regarding transaction, the CA should be separated between companies like this. And 
All right, so another case uh, that stakeholders are individual and a single owner of uh, the consortium. As a bad practice, if the owner issue ideas for all users, the endorsement on the uh, consortium may makes no sense uh, because the endorsement is uh, executed by a single, uh, single organization. So, as good practice, each user should be considered an organization and has its own CA. Second perspective is uh, transaction execution. That is uh, execution and management method over the blockchain network. A requirement for the perspective is that all transactions should be processed by a significant number of organizations with identical result in each organization. So, as shown in the figure, uh, a fabric-based system should have proper endorsement policy setting uh, and chain code design including private data and uh, ordering communication protocol with avoiding single point of trust paths. Okay, third perspective is management and governance. That is management of the blockchain network and or governance of consortium. The uh, requirement for the, this aspect is that the management and or operation related to the consortium should be decided, performed by multiple organizations, and the processes and the operational history should be transparent. Okay, left part shows uh, bad practice. So, as shown in the figure, inter-organizational operation is uh, decided performed by single organization of one in a centralized manner uh, with centralized script. Uh, so, as good practice, inter-organizational operations should be performed by each organization's admin and config parameters should be coordinated among organizations. Also, it needs to endure transparency of coordination uh, process, coordination process, and operational history. So, the last perspective is system configuration. That is, configuration of the blockchain network and uh, blockchain-based system. So, a requirement for the perspective is that uh, the configuration must be uh, such that data on the ledger cannot be changed without the agreement of multiple organization. To do this, uh, the configuration must be considered on ownership and management settings to mitigate unauthorized data uh, modification, uh, for example, like this. And also, the system must be verifiable and detectable in case of unauthorized data modification, for example, uh, with comparing uh, ledgers. Next, uh, we try to consider a uh, reference architecture. The goal here is to elaborate on a specific architecture a fully de decentralized fabric-based system. However, the basic requirement uh, to abstract to consider a reference architecture directly. So first, uh, we try to specify the requirement from the architecture perspective, and then we design a reference architecture with specified requirements. Uh, this is a list of specific uh, requirements. So, 
So each specific requirement uh, corresponds to basic requirement and public component. And uh, a specific requirement uh, annotated with JIS uh, labels. Uh, label public means a uh, specific uh, functionality that uh, fabric should have as a blockchain platform. And uh, label machine is mechanism currently missing from official released functions. This is the overview of a reference architecture to satisfy specific requirements. Uh, subsequent slide will explain uh, the specific requirement part by part. Okay. This slide explains the base part uh, of transaction execution system, ID, and system configuration. Enduring decentralization of the execution system required proper system design and configuration. Spot single point of trust on the transaction processing must be eliminated. So, uh, so uh, to do this, uh, first each OS has its own independent share, and also the blockchain network has uh, a BFT ordering service. We will discuss about the uh, requirement later again. And furthermore, each chain code has an endorsement policy setting, including private data, to get agreement from enough organizations uh, peers for BFT, uh, Byzantine Fault Tolerant. And each organization should have its own API server to submit transaction to public network uh, by uh, themselves. For uh, system configuration, it must be, it must avoid a single organization or administrator becoming a single point of trust. To do this, each component, especially peers on other CA, is not owned or managed by a single organization. This slide uh, showed an accomplished requirement with associated community activities. Mechanisms for achieving some requirement are missing, uh, but some are being uh, proposed, uh, developed in the community, and will enable them to be achieved in, this, in the future. Uh, first one is for BFT ordering. In the consortium with low mutual uh, trust, uh, ordering should also have BFT. But uh, it's not supported as of uh, version 2.5. Uh, this is uh, the next released version of Fabric. Uh, of course, uh, consortium has recognized uh, the realization of BFT order as a top priority for uh, version 3 series and specific feature proposal and development uh, in progress. And, and as another uh, requirement, the system should be able to verify detect data fraud. But Fabric itself uh, does not data, uh, detect data fraud. So the system needs to check data integrity of blocks transaction state later. The following two tools can be used to achieve this. First one is blockchain verifier, uh, which is a project in Hyperledger Labos. And this is a tool to verify the integrity of blocks and transactions. And the blockchain verifier already supported uh, Fabric. Uh, Ledger utility is a uh, fabric command 
to identify potential divergent transaction among snapshots. It will be available from version 2.5. Okay, this slide discusses the perspective of management and governance. As a requirement, a system should have a mechanism, mechanism whereby config values, config changes for the consortium are determined by multiple organizations. As shown in previous slide, config values on the blockchain network, especially channel, chain code, can be managed on chain without depending on a specific organization by using public GLI. So the mechanism is in place and need to be used properly. Uh, we need to remember that other configs on the consortium are handled offline. And as, a, as another requirement, the system has a mechanism of cross-organizational operations management workflow. It should, should have a capability of uh, cross-organizational coordination and execution. And it should have transparency of uh, operational process and operational history. Uh, but the fabric does not support such end-to-end -end operational workflow. So coordination and execution must be done offline. And it is diff difficult to ensure transparency of process history of chain. So uh, management tool to streamline them would be required. Towards satisfying the above requirement, we are expecting the possibility use of OxSC. From here, I'd like to discuss about potential use of uh, OxSC. First, uh, I want to talk about what is uh, OxSC. OxSC is Operation Smart Contract. Uh, which uh, we proposed. And the uh, goal is to establish a decentralized system management across multiple organizations. And the primary idea is to define a uh, system operational workflow as a smart contract, like this. And each organization, admin or agent program, uh, something like that, operates their own nodes according to the smart contract. As a result, the operations are unified over much organization. The value of OPSSC is that inter-organizational operations can be performed without relying on decision uh, by a specific organization with uniform procedure, config parameters, efficiently. We have implemented uh, OPSSC for Hyperledge Fabric version 2.x and the implementation is registered as a Hyperledge Labos project in 2020. The purpose is to streamline end-to-end -end operation workflow using the individual tasks uh, like uh, Fabric CRIs, subcommand. And the first uh, phase, as a first phase, the implementation provides uh, OPSSC for managing the public network, uh, especially for operating chain code and channels. And the left shows uh, typical blockchain operation in uh, fabric version 2. In version 2, only individual tasks can be executed in a decentralized manner. So uh, the perspective of end-to-end uh, -end operations, organization, uh, organizations need to share adjust config parameters of chain. And then uh, each organization executes the command 
with uh, adjusted parameter uh, manually. On the other hand, OxSC, uh, in OxSC, end-to-end operations can be executed in a decentralized manner. So, uh, organizations can share adjust the config parameters on chain, especially on OxSC chain codes. And then, uh, each organization's agent automatically executes the command based on the proposal uh, on uh, chain codes, uh, sorry, uh, OxSC chain codes. This slide uh, presents OxSG for operating chain code. New chain code lifecycle is introduced in Fabric version 2. The new step for approving uh, chain code definition by each organization is added, and it can eliminate centralized process in deploying uh, chain code. However, as a remaining issue, it increases operations which are executed by each organization and must be must use the same parameters. Also, it needs to share and negotiate the source code, uh, fabric, uh, chain code source code and config parameters like uh, uh, chain code definition with other organization in typical case. OxSC for uh, operating the chain code streamline such end-to-end -end chain code deployment. In a typical use case, an organization creates a proposal with uh, chain code source code and chain code definition. And then, as organizations vote for the proposal shared on the OxSC. When the majority of votes is collected, each agent automatically deploying the chain code based on the proposal uh, with downloading, installing, approving, and committing chain code. And OxSC, uh, this slide shows OxSC for operating channels. In the left uh, shows uh, processes for uh, channel update across multiple organizations, like adding an uh, organization. In this typical process, of one, uh, an organization create a config TX uh, to update uh, channel config, and then other, other organization uh, signs uh, the config TX. Then, an organization sent to the config TX to node to update the channel, channel configs. So as shown in the figure, as a remaining issue, it needs to share config TX with the other organization. OxSG streamline uh, such operation uh, channel update across much organization. The sequence is the same as uh, ones for operating chain code. Okay, now I give a demonstration using a customized test network in uh, Fabric samples. Just a moment. Okay. This is a scenario uh, for deploying a new chain code. And there, uh, uh, this uh, is a portal screen with interacting OxSG. And in this case, there are three organizations, OG123, and each OG's admin uh, uses separate portal executed by, uh, sorry, uh, separate portal for each organization. Just a moment. Okay. Now, OG1 create and submit a proposal to deploy new chain code. And then, 
she, the proposal is shared on OPSEC chain code, and then the chain code notifies the information to other organization. Next, the org2 approves the uh, proposal. When the majority of approval is collected, uh, each agent for each organization deploys to the proposed chain code to all nodes for each organization based on the access sheet. Now, uh, each agent for each organization is uh, deploying the chain code. And now, chain code is deployed over all nodes for all organizations. Okay. So, in summary, OPSESC enables, uh, in this case, decentralized uh, coordination of operational information across organizations, and it enables automated unified uh, chain code deployment. Okay, let's go back to the slide. Okay. As, uh, okay. Uh, current implementation of OPSESC only focuses on uh, channel uh, chain code management but we expect that the OPSESC concept of defining operational workflow as a smart contract has potential for application to other management processes. Uh, I think this is our future work. Okay, uh, let's summarize my presentation. To add fully decentralized uh, hyperledger fabric-based systems, not only execution system, but also management and system configuration, uh, we try to analyze uh, comprehensive uh, for basic requirement and design a reference architecture to satisfy the requirement. Uh, if BFT ordering order is implemented in version 3 series, we, it will be ready as a uh, blockchain platform to satisfy the requirement. And we will demo, uh, we demonstrated the applicability of OPSESC. The goal is to establish decentralized system operations across multiple organizations. And the primary idea is to define a system operation uh, as a smart contract. In the current implementation, support end-to-end -end operational workflow on uh, chain code and uh, channel management. And uh, I'm going to expand the scope of uh, type of management in the future. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you. Yes, that's right. Uh, so end to end, uh, uh, to how should I say, uh, interorganizational end to end uh, workflow is uh, our scope. Thank you. Please under. support the current feature that exists in 2.4 whereby you don't have to use a system channel so uh, does it work with 
that no, capability. No, not yet. Uh, uh, currently, uh, the implementation uh, supports uh, version 2.4, but uh, uh, with system system channel. So, but uh, we uh, are going to uh, implement uh, without uh, version without uh, system channel. In theory, yeah, should with, simplify things, right? With, yeah, with uh, other uh, uh, OS and admin. Yeah. This is one of uh, nearest future work. Yeah. Sounds good, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Reliability would also improve a lot. Right. Because you wouldn't have a single channel that for the transactions the cross channels would be the same. Right. Uh, how long do you think until uh, version 3 sort of arrives for production use with these uh, with the BFDs and so forth? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. It's just <laughs> uh, watching the how should I say the uh, activity on the community uh, in the outside of the, uh, it depends on the decision of community. And and how ready is the OPC as far as like can we start using it for production deployments or is it still in development or what's the status? How would you rate it in terms of production readiness? Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm not sure. Of course, I try to uh, apply uh, the production, uh, but uh, um, not yet. And uh, this uh, implementation is open source and someone <laughs> eventually uh, use uh, this in production, but I'm not sure. And the production use is our one of future work. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would assume that the general workflow of the Hyperledger Foundation would apply, so right now it's in lab, it would have to go through incubation and then it would become, let's say, an officially uh, production ready framework, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.